Hey guys, it's Kathleen Eaton again. So, um, my brother called me a couple of nights ago um, wanting me to talk to a friend of his and to tell them, you know, basically where it says in the Bible that tarot cards are forbidden um, to Christians um, or followers of God. Um, so, I know there's a lot of you that, that, um, that are already familiar with this, but for the sake of those people who aren't, um, and since my ministry is in, in a large part to those who are not aware of, you know, that they may be walking in um, things that God says are wrong, um, I'm going to go ahead and cover this. So um, the first one I want to read to you is in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10. Um, and that is in the Old Testament for those of you that are not familiar with where it is. Um, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10, he says, There shall not be found among you anyone that makes their son or daughter pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do those things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God does drive them out from before you. You shall be perfect with the Lord your God. Um, for these nations which you shall possess listened to observers of times and to diviners, but as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do so. And then he talks about how God would raise, a, raise up a prophet like Moses from the midst of their brothers like him, and we should listen to everything that he says. Um, uh, let me find this a little further down, I think. And it shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken, this is in verse 19, not hearken or not listen unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Um, okay, so also in Deuteronomy 12, um, there's a bit more that I think we should probably bring out. Um, in Deuteronomy 12, it's not specifically talking, of, it's not talking about those specific practices, but what it does say, and this is beginning in verse I think it's 29 29 when the Lord your God shall cut off all the nations from before you where you go to possess them and you succeed them and you dwell in their land take heed to yourself that you are not snared by following them after they've been ruined from before you and that you do not inquire after their gods saying how did these nations serve their gods even so I will do the same you shall not do so to the Lord your God for every abomination to the Lord that he hates have they done to their gods even um, for even their sons and daughters they have burned in the fire to their gods. What things soever I command you, observe to do it, you shall not add to it nor diminish from it. Okay, and there are other passages, um, without going into them all, that specifically say not to be uh, involved in the practices of the, pe the pagans or the heathen nations, in other words, the unbelieving nations um, around them. So it was a specific... Um, specific word from God telling us that we're not to engage in these pagan practices. Now the pagans were largely involved in all kinds of things, divination, witchcraft, which is like spells, charms, um, enchanting, the attempt to manipulate other people um, through quote unquote spells, um, visualization. There's all kinds of shamanism is, involves visualization too. Um, and, and if you look on any page that talks about visualization that's related to witchcraft, even in our time, you can see that that's a practice of witchcraft. Um, but anyway, um, so divination, divination specifically is about like trying to divine um, the future or guidance or whatever. Um, let me just, and that word divine was probably pretty telling too, because I think they believed that the information they were getting was coming from their gods. So, divination, the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or of the unknown by supernatural means. Um, the Celts had an art of divination. Lots of, lots of cultures did. Um, tarot cards themselves were a late invention, um, but the practice of divination has gone on for, you know, thousands of years. Um, so, God specifically warned against divination and tarot cards. The, the, now, tarot cards, when they were initially created, they were not, um, cons they were not an occult thing, okay? Um, the cards in themselves were intended as playing cards. Um, 
However, they were turned to occult use. Tarot, let's see. And in, and in so far as they're used for occult purposes, and now pretty much that's all they're used for. They're not used in regular as regular playing cards anymore. Um, so anyway, um, that's where it says it in the Word of God. And I think that, you know, it's important to mention, um, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about like the Hindu stuff too, that, that, uh, because she mentioned it that night that she was trying, like when I tried to ask her, what are you using the cards for? What exactly is it your intent? And she said, reading energy, reading people's energy. Okay, well, that's not exactly how it works. Um, maybe some people are saying that now because, you know, these things tend to evolve and people's descriptions of what they're doing with them tend to evolve. Um, but I guess the first thing I want you to do is ask yourself if you're involved in this stuff, right? How do you know what teachings you're following are true? Like, I remember when I got involved in New Agey stuff before I got saved. And basically, it was um, because I felt powerless, you know? I was sad a lot. I had a lot of stuff going on in my heart and in my lives and my in my life and my emotions, you know, in my mind. Um, you know, we're, we have, it, it's tough growing up and it's tough being a grown up too, you know, in this world. So um, I think we tend to, if, if something presents itself to us that we think is going to help us get an advantage or gain an edge in life, then we're going to grab it, right? And especially if we're open to spiritual things like that. Um, and I was like way open-minded. I used to, you know, I, I have this thing where I say, you know, like don't be so open-minded that you fall, you know, your brain falls out. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we tend to run after these things and um, I don't think we even question, you know, like in my house growing up, nobody told us this stuff was wrong. Um, I was bought a Ouija board for like, I don't know, gosh, ninth or 10th birthday, right? Um, a couple years after I had a vision at a sleepover at somebody's house where they had a fake seance and I had a real vision, you know, which I told my mom about, you know, but they, my parents thought that Ouija was a game because that's how Parker Brothers presented it. But here's the thing, um, you know, we have to kind of, we should question what it is we're following and why we're following it. And I understand that, like for me, I prayed and prayed and prayed for years and didn't get any answers. And I was probably still praying even when I got involved. I was still praying even when I got involved in new agey stuff. I can remember when I started trying to get into astral travel where I was like, you know, afraid I'd get stuck outside my body. I had no clue that it was wrong. So I was like, oh Lord, you know, if this is of you, please help me do it. And if it's not, please don't let me, you know? Um, so, and he didn't, he didn't let me. And the only time it ever happened to me, which I told in my um, prophetic word, it's time to get real church video was, um, you know, when, uh, when I brought a new age magazine into my home for quote, educational purposes. And I ended up having spirit force me into an out of body experience. That's a whole story in itself. So you should probably listen to that video if you want to hear it. But, you know, it didn't, I couldn't read the Bible back then, which I also talk about in that video. Um, I would try and try and try, and it just wouldn't sink in, even though I had great reading comprehension with just about anything else I could read. Um, so I didn't know that it was wrong. The priests at the Catholic Church I grew up in, they weren't, well, I grew up, I went to several growing up, but the, the ones that, you know, that I was going to around this time, they didn't tell us that this stuff was wrong. They didn't say a word about any of this. So... Um, but if somebody had presented it to me, I would have hoped that I would have wanted more information. Like, and, and for me, I always believed that Jesus Christ was God. I always believed he died for my sins. I just didn't know how to get to God. I didn't understand about repentance and everything. So um, if I had that opportunity, I would like to think that I would have said, hey, wait a second, if God's not for this, then I shouldn't be doing it, right? Um, but so now we have to ask ourselves not just why we're doing it, and, and, and how do we know that, that, that it's true? Like people that do tarot and all kinds of other quote unquote readings, um, I looked up a little bit of it and they, they're like, well, the, whatever comes to your mind, whatever comes to the top of your head, um, whatever pops into your head, that's what you should speak. Like in other words, they're just trusting the quote unquote universe to give them information. But in the biblical perspective, we're dealing with spiritual, a spiritual world of 
um, angels who are loyal to God versus those that rebelled against God, lying and deceiving spirits versus the true ones. And the Bible tells us uh, in the New Covenant writings, uh, or New Testament as most of you are probably familiar with calling it, um, that we're to test the spirits. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Well, why are they false prophets? They're false prophets because they listened to deceiving spirits who gave them false information, right? Um, so, and, and really, if you think about it, for all those so-called prophets out there who have given false, you know, predictions or whatever, um, we have to ask ourselves, well, okay, like say Jean Dixon, for example, not everything, there's something she said that people think came true, but it was, of course, very vague stuff that you could probably just put into several different situations and claim it came true. But for the ones that didn't come true, then we need to stop and consider, well, where did she get this information from? She thinks that she was hearing from some divine source, right? I'm pretty sure she, she thinks that it was God because I'm pretty sure she presented herself as a Christian right so she gave out false predictions right false prophecies well where did the information come from if it didn't come from god if it came from god it would have been accurate because god knows the end from the beginning but if it come from another source that has to explain the the reason why it didn't come at, you know come out as accurate either she was getting it from her own head or it was coming from a spiritual source and she didn't really know the difference so um, that's when we kind of have to come to the place where we, we ask ourselves, okay, do I believe in the Bible? Do I believe in Jesus Christ? Do I consider myself a Christian? Um, and if you're not sure, you probably need to make sure of what your beliefs are, you know? I think that we all owe it to ourselves because, you know, if, if Christianity is the truth, then we're playing with fire when we mess with this stuff because God says it's forbidden. And he tells us if we continually to walk after the things that he says are forbidden, then we're, we're not entering the kingdom of heaven, right? We're, we're not going to heaven when we pass away. And eventually our soul will be judged and um, we will lose our soul. And now, if the people out there that say, oh, all paths lead to God and everything's from God, I mean, really, you need to stop and question yourself why you have that kind of belief considering that, you know, the pagans were sacrificing their children, burning them alive in fires to their deities and stuff like that, deities they claimed to hear from. If everything was God, do you really think that would have happened? Um, you know, <laughs> if everything was God, then what about these, um, you know, Hindu practices like the meditation, the Eastern meditation that leads to things like kundalini psychosis? And if you haven't heard of that, I urge you to look into it. Um, it's, it's basically, it's a psychosis. The people go mentally ill. There, it's said that kundalini spirit, which is which is what's supposed to be, according to Hinduism, coiled at the base of your spine. It's associated with false deities. So basically, it's a spirit that they claim, you know, rises up through your chakras and ends up opening a third eye, which gives you insight and blah, blah, blah. But this these practices are known to produce um, um, both mental illness and also physical problems. So you might want to consider if you if your idea is that all religions lead to God, why on earth would you think that? I mean, have you not considered these, or maybe you didn't know about them? Um, but you know, I don't think that the, a true um, loving God would, um, the Creator of the universe, would uh, lead us into practices that would cause those kinds of things, cause us really bad problems, right, physically and mentally. So. Um, you got to kind of ask yourself why you believe what you believe. And um, if, you're, if you're messing with that kind of stuff, um, considering, like I said, the difference between like, okay, if all paths lead to God, then why do we have these super negative things happening to people who get involved in this stuff or have spirits that lie to them and manipulate them, um, such as... Um, there was a spirit that wanted this new age guy. Well, he, there was a group of new agers that, um, you know, the spirit told them he wanted to build a retreat and they were going to teach classes and all this stuff. Well, he also told them that he'd give them the money to build the retreat. Next thing you know, one of the guys in the group, this spirit starts telling him to give money to the group so that they can build stuff. So he does. And then he tells him to do it again. And he does. And he does. And he does. And he keeps on having him give money till the guy's like out of money. He has no more money to spend. Right. And then 
this this spirit basically well first of all he stopped doing it he stopped giving the spirit told him to give more money he's like i don't have any more money so he didn't do it then the spirit started harassing him and tormenting him until he finally gave in went and got credit took out credit and went into debt to give more money so and then there's you know the spirit that told um, Laura Maxwell's mom, you know, that this dude was her soulmate and then turned out the guy's like super abusive. So you need to stop and question, you know, if all things come from God, then how come we have these lying and deceiving spirits and manipulating and harassing and tormenting spirits, right? So to me, that that's just more affirmation that the Christian worldview is correct, that there's evil spirits and there are good spirits and that God has warned us against these practices in part to help protect us, in part because it's it's, you're dealing with deceiving spirits. And even, you know, all these divination practices, it's not that you're expecting that you have some kind of power to, quote, read the future. The real doctrine of these practices is that, quote, unquote, the universe or some entity or some universal consciousness is giving you information and it just pops in your head and you just blurt it out, right? Um, in reality, more than likely, it is deceiving spirits that are doing this because God's holy angels, his, his angel messengers, would certainly not, the ones that are loyal, would certainly not operate through things that he says not to do. As a Christian, as a believer who truly has repented of sin, and you know, you believe the gospel, you believe Jesus Christ, that's what it means to confess your sins. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The word confess is homologeo, and what it means is to speak the same way. So we come into agreement, right? Um, confess the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved, right? It means to speak the same way of him. It means to agree with him. So if we believe in him and we have you know, abandoned our sins and we've forsaken them, we've asked God to forgive us, we've confessed to God that we believe in Jesus, we believe the gospel and ask his forgiveness and cleansing to help us be the godly people he wants us to be and live our lives the way he calls us to, and then God gives us insight. God gives us understanding. God will operate what's called the gifts or benefits of his own spirit um, as he wills, when he wills, okay? Our job is to be in the word and in prayer and, you know, reaching out to other people and praying for other people. And when we need help, we pray, right? God's a very present help in time of need. That's our part. And then God on his part will sometimes give us information to help other people, um, whether it's uh, to help bring other Christians to more mature relationship with God or to help them um, to, to recognize that they, they need to change something like they've been sinning or whatever. And sometimes God calls that out um, through another person even. Um, or it may be just something where he wants to minister to somebody the gospel. He wants to help somebody to understand that the gospel is true. Like the example I would give is when I went into, I used to smoke back then, and I went into a, a, a special store because I used to smoke clove. And um, I would was mixed with tobacco. But anyways, um, I went into the store one day. I hadn't been there for a while, and there's a new guy working there. And initially, I wished him a Merry Christmas. And then all of a sudden, I was like, wait, you don't cel celebrate Christmas, do you? And he said, no. I said, you're Jewish, aren't you? He said, yes. I didn't know this guy. I never even heard about this guy before. He, I had never seen him, never heard about him, hadn't been to that store in a long, long time. So this was information that suddenly I just had. God gave it to me because my spirit's connected with his spirit, and I just pray for people, you know? Um, so God decided that he wanted to help this guy to see that there's something different about me, so that I had insight that I shouldn't have had as just from my, on my own, right? Um, to help him so that when I pointed him to certain scriptures, um, in, in the ancient uh, covenant, the, the, what we call the Old Testament generally. Um, so that when I pointed to those, he's gonna have more of a likelihood now. He's gonna go and look at that and he's gonna be like, wow, there might be something here. I should pray about this and I should go look at it, right? Um, so God will do things like that, but you don't wanna be seeking the, um, the spiritual insights from the wrong sources. First of all, they're gonna lie to you anyway. They may give you, you know, here and there some helpful information even to help you in your life because they're trying to lure you. They want you to think they're your friends, these deceiving spirits, but really they can't stand humans. 
Um, and there are so many testimonies of people who got involved with spiritism or, or spirit guides or whatever who, can test, who have testified about how these spirits who were supposedly either people that passed on that they, should, they would have known or somebody you know, famous like you know, Hillary Clinton talking to Eleanor Roosevelt or you know, um, whoever they presented themselves as supposedly benevolent spirits but who turned on them either when they started to get interested in Jesus and started looking more into the gospel or when um, they stopped following the advice or the the quote guidance of these spirits the spirits would get mad and would harass them and torment them um, uh, many of these people who have come out to tell their stories have become Christians um, as a result of some of the stuff that happened in their lives that opened their eyes so um, when I when I when I bring this stuff up, the reason I'm bringing it up is because you know, for those of you out there running after tarot, you're running after Wicca, you're running after you know communication with spirits, all this stuff that God forbids in the Word. Um, it's important for us to stop and consider, you know, what is your source and is your source really um, reliable, right? And because they are our lying and deceiving spirits, what? Do you have that you can use to literally to test them to make sure they're of God and if you don't have the Word of God as your foundation then you really don't have anything to test them all you have is your feelings all you have is speculation all you have is well you know it did something nice for me therefore it must be nice right and and, and unfortunately very very sadly sometimes people get led um, led astray to the point where they're, they're, the, the spirit gets control of the person's body like what happened with Laura Maxwell's mom um, to where uh, she would go into trances, you know, she's standing there cooking in her kitchen and just without her intention went into a trance without wanting to, right? Her kitchen caught on fire. She could have died. And then there were a couple of times when it, it pushed something, pushed her into traffic. And I can testify to you based on what happened with my, my younger brother, which I also talked about in that prophetic word video. Um, they can do that. They can push you. Um, when you're involved in stuff like that, you're giving them more of a right to access and more of a right to influence in your life. Um, and sometimes they can, they can do things to you. So um, I guess uh, what I'm getting at is that you could be really very well endangering yourself. Laura's mom ended up, um, first she ended up in a mental institution um, for her own protection. And then unfortunately, whatever was in her didn't get kicked out. I don't know the whole story. Like, I don't know when Laura got saved. I don't know how much she knew about deliverance or anything like that at the time. But her mom ended up killing herself um, after she got out of the mental institution. At some point, she ended up killing herself because of the spiritual harassment that she was enduring. So I want to encourage you, you know, if you're into this stuff, whether it's the Hinduism, the Wicca, the, you know, the communicating with spirits or you know, new agey stuff, astral travel, whatever it is. The Word of God tells us not to engage in these practices for our own protection. And I want to strongly encourage you to really be praying about, you know, if you believe there is a God who created you, that you would pray to Him and ask Him to show you the truth, to help you to come to understand what is truth. Um, if, if you're open to it, I would encourage you to really start researching reasons why you can believe the Bible. Um, there's lots of reasons from archaeological, historical, the prophecies, the very detailed prophecies that have come to pass. God doesn't have a track record of prophecies that don't come to pass. All these people with outside of um, the Judeo-Christian um, belief system have, you know, questionable track records and and even some of their quote-unquote fulfilled prophecies um, basically are so vague they're just riddles that you could make fit almost anything so I really want to encourage you to really think about this stuff um, and to pray about it and to start looking into reasons why you can believe the Bible um, and again if you haven't seen um, the prophetic word video that I put up on my YouTube or Facebook channels I want to encourage you to listen to that too um, because God is judging our nation and the reason it's happening is because of Christians running or people who were raised in Christianity or maybe their parents or grandparents or great-grandparents were Christians who have turned away from the God of the Bible, who have gone running after all these other things like tarot, like Hinduism, chakras, and all this other stuff. Um, and I want you to just really consider why you're doing it. Ask yourself, you know, like, what do you believe? What do you really believe? 
and and do you want to know the truth and if you do please do the research and praying about it like i suggested and ask god to help you to see behind um the the deceptions if there's deceptions in your life that he'll help you to see them for what they are if there's lying deceiving spirits in their life that he'll help you to see them what for what they are um so that you can come to the truth come to the true god get get out of that that deception you know and and have the real god in your life and have the real benefits of god in your life um, and then we don't come to him because of the benefits of, you know, the, the spiritual gifts, but at least we know that he loves us enough that he will do things for us. You know, um, he will help us in our lives. Um, when, you know, sometimes we do make our own messes that we have to kind of dig ourselves out of. And sometimes we might not have enough faith or whatever. And I'm not saying that your life would be just a rose garden without thorns if you come to the Lord, but this is about truth. And I think there's a lot of you out there who really do want truth, but you and you want help in your lives, but you just got confused about where to get it. And you've gone running after things, and you think because you had some supernatural experience in your life that that legitimizes it, what you're doing. Just because somebody's given you a prophecy that, or a word of about something that may have been true doesn't mean that the source is coming from God, and it doesn't mean that it's for your benefit. Um, like I said, this is, this is like a carrot on the stick that Satan uses to lure people away from God to their own destruction in the long run. So um, I, I'm guessing that if you're a person who really cares about God and doing what's right and you want to go to heaven someday or you want to be with Jesus someday, that, that you'll look at this with different eyes and maybe seek God about it and hopefully, you know, come out of that mess. Um, there's a word that the Lord um, gives in uh, the book of the Revelation of John where he says, Come out of them, my people, and be ye separate, and touch not the unclean thing. And that's what God's calling um, Christians or people who've been raised in Christianity or who's, who have a Christian heritage to come out from that pagan idolatry, from mystery Babylon, hidden Babylon. Um, think about what Babylon was. It was the people of God turned away um, from from God and built a tower to reach the heavens and you know we're running after all kinds of false beliefs um, as as a, like a, a system trying to do it on their own I guess I mean who knows their motives at the time but obviously some deception crept in right um, but we don't want to be part of mystery Babylon and if you read about mystery Babylon in um, in the New Testament it's very clear in the, that it's aligned with Satan and with demonic um, with rebellion against God. So anyways, I hope this information has helped you guys and given you some food for thought. And, um, you know, I'm praying for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me on my channels, whether that's youtube.com slash Ezekiel's call. Um, you can get it to it slash Ezekiel's call or slash the letter C slash Ezekiel's call. And I'm also on Facebook, facebook.com slash Ezekiel's call. On Facebook, it is not the music ministry Ezekiel's call, it's the watchman on the wall Ezekiel's call. And you can read about um, that, you know, you can see that in the description, in the channel description. So I hope this has helped. Um, God bless you, keep you in his truth or bring you back to his truth if you've fallen away. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.